Aloha kako! Greetings to us all. I am Rachel Delovio, the Anthropology Collections Manager at the Nevada State Museum. Today, in celebration of Asian American and Pacific Island Heritage Month, I'm going to highlight the museum's small tapa collection. Tapa is the common name for a cloth made from the inner bark of trees. The name varies throughout the Polynesian islands depending on culture as well as the use for the tapa. For example, in the Hawaiian Islands, tapa made for bedding is called kapa moi. Before European contact, tapa was used for a variety of purposes and could vary from island to island. But clothing, uh, bedding, as well as swaddling babies uh, for ceremonial purposes, and it was also even used for burials. Tapa is made uh, by peoples in South America, Africa, and Southeast Asia but it is an iconic product of, of Polynesian cultures. In the Pacific, the uh, paper mulberry, or Brausa netia papyrifera, is most often used, although sometimes the wild fig or the breadfruit tree were also used for tapa making. The paper mulberry um, is originally from Eastern Asia, and cuttings of it were carried on canoes by the peoples that populated the Pacific Islands. In the Pacific, the paper mulberry does not set seed or flower, so it has to be propagated from cuttings, and it is specifically cultivated for tapa making. Throughout Polynesia, the women um, largely make the tapa, but the men would assist by making tools, such as the bamboo stamp, wooden printing boards, wooden beaters, and anvils. This tapa was donated to the state of Nevada in 1934 and is part of the Dr. S. L. Lee collection. Dr. Lee was a prominent Carson City doctor and Union Army veteran, as well as a Victorian era collector of historic and ethnographic artifacts, as well as natural history specimens. This tapa has a um, tag from Dr. Lee saying it's from Pongo Pongo, Samoa. In Samoa, they call tapa siapo. Uh, this siapo is decorated on the top using free hand painting using natural dyes. In Samoa, tapa was also decorated using a rubbing process with ochre on top of a flat carved piece of wood called an upeti. And that was also another way they decorated their siapo. In the Hawaiian Islands, beaten bark cloth is called kapa. So here are two kapa making tools. This one is a uh, kapa beater, and it is called an ie kuku, and um, it is used in the second beating of tapa. And as you can see, there are four sides, each side doing something different. And this would be the side where they would do the watermarking, which basically embosses um, a pattern onto the fabric. And here we have a um, tag from Dr. Lee um, saying Kappa Beater Hawaiian Islands. So it gives us some provenience as to which Pacific Island this Kappa Beater came from. This is also uh, from Hawaii, and this is a bamboo stamp uh, called a Ohe Kapala. And as you can see, at the end is a design, and um, the kapa makers would put the natural dyes on the top and then um, just print the design on their kapa. As I mentioned earlier, the one tapa is undergoing conservation treatment to relax creases. And this is being overseen by someone within the Division of Museums and History who's a conservator. Uh, we have a layer of reme, which is a non-woven polypropylene or polyester cloth-like material. We have blotter paper and then a small piece of plexiglass. So the process involves getting the blotter paper damp with distilled water. And then we dry it a little bit, um, have blotter paper 
absorb some of the moisture. We place the blotter paper on top of the reme, and then we use the plexiglass as a weight. As you can see here, we have the three layers of the reme, the blotter paper, and the plexiglass piece acting as a weight. Thank you for watching this episode of Curator's Corner. If you're interested in learning to make kapa, Delani Tanahi is a 20-year practitioner of Hawaiian kapa making and offers lessons on Oahu. See her Facebook and Instagram page at Kapa Hawaii or email her at kapahawaii at gmail.com.